Hello, artists. Today we have a classic. And sorry about my voice. Uh, I have a bit of a cold. Setting up a palette. Who doesn't love to set up a palette, right? So <laughs> stick around. If you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Irit. I'm an intuitive color-led artist based in Austria, in Europe. And on my channel, I share my artsy adventures. Now, I recently got this fantastic art toolkit, I'm going to say palette which I think I show at the end the one that I previously had these are in my opinion the best compact palettes out there at the moment they are made and sold in the US so I actually had a friend <laughs> bring it for me um, but these are amazing they have all kinds of configurations um, I actually just went with the one that they offer because I also had a few pans on hand from previous pur purchases and if you want a compact palette that you can move around uh, like the the pans and have all kinds of like a lot of flexibility and different configurations then this is the one for you you can carry so many paints with you and it takes up very little space now this works only if you have tube pa paints right if you have if most of your collection is in pans then you know you might have to reconsider because this means you will need to buy the pans i think they offer some that are already filled for you but I think most people just fill their own. So this is definitely geared towards people who keep most of their watercolors and gouache in tubes. Not keep, like buy. <laughs> buy it in tubes. So I really love sketching my palettes. It's really fun. It's also a great way to start any sketchbook with a sketch of your palette and then swatching things. And of course, you can also make notes and write down all the colors. Now, if you want to speed up this video or you don't really care about, you know, watching me swatch it, I will leave below a link to all of the information about this palette and my favorite uh, colors that are in it. So you can check that out. And I will also leave a link to the place where you can buy your own palette. If I speak too slowly or this is going too slowly for you, you can speed it up. Uh, YouTube has that offer. You just have to go to like the gear or the settings and you can speed it up. I will sound a little bit funny, but you know, it'll um, take less of your precious time. So that's always an option. And if I go too fast, you can slow me down. But I think this video uh, is pretty chill and it's in real time. So. As you can see, I decided to make a palette to rule them all. And well, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to tell you that this one has gouache and watercolors in it. Now I have to see how it holds because the problem with gouache, they do tend to dry and become more crumbly. Watercolors normally don't do that. Some watercolors are drier than others. Daniel Smith, for example, is my favorite brand to travel with because it is more on the dry side, but it will not crumble and fall out of your palette. Like very, very rarely. It'll need to be really, really dry. Maybe if you don't use the palette for a long time, then it might do that. But other than that, watercolors doesn't do that. And gouache actually does. So I have to see how this holds up, if this works. And the more often you use your palette, the less likely it is to happen. Like the paints will stay more um, moist if you use it regularly. So this is also a note to myself to use it. So let's start swatching. Uh, the first color is white, but you can't really see that. Then I have buff titanium in gouache. Then I have Naples yellow in watercolor. Then I have Windsor and Newton pale rose blush, which is also gouache. And then I have gray titanium in watercolor. And those are my lighter colors. This is Nickel Azo Yellow. This is Quinacridone Gold from Golden or Core. 
This is from Lucas Naples Yellow Red. It's just a very unique color that I enjoy having. This is Lunar Earth, which is a super granulating color from Daniel Smith. I think with um, travel palettes, it's really nice to have super granulating colors because they give you kind of more you know with less so you get like the texture and the separation and the granulation depending on the paint um, which you know with sketches many times they look flat so this is uh, a good way to kind of combat that flatness uh, this I also had already in a pan the purple one I think it's probably cobalt violet um, either from Winsor & Newton or from Rembrandt. This is Bright Rose from Holbein. And my second Ride or Die Pink is Opus from Da Vinci. So you can see the Bright Rose is just a little bit more bluish than Opus. And then here, I think I also had this already. This is probably some sort of like vermilion or cadmium light or like scarlet lake. One of these colors, you see like an orangey red. Then we have this one I also already had in a pan. Otherwise, I pr probably would have taken a larger <laughs> pan, but we'll see. This is, of course, ultramarine blue. Then this I also already have had in a pan. So we'll see if I want it. I think this is chromium blue, I want to say. I'm not sure because I didn't write it down. Okay, this is some sort of cobalt teal. I'm not sure which brand, but I kind of like them all. Then, so some of these I really just don't know <laughs> what they are. This looks like Cascade Green. And then this is, what are you? This looks like Zoazite. Which I like to use as a dark, especially with like florals. This looks like some sort of like olive green. This is Moon Glow, I know, because I wrote it down. <laughs> and then this one, I think, is... Again, it was already in the pan. It looks like Rose of Ultramarine, something like that. And then this one is Lunar Black. Which, again, is just a... It's a like the Luna colors are just a great way to get texture and I think it works especially well in sketches. Okay, and then the next ones are gouache. And I'm just going to tap a little bit. So we'll see how they behave in this palette. So this is my attempt at one palette to rule them all because I like to use both. So the first one I have here is Lemon Yellow. This one is from Holbein. Then this one, I'm not sure which color it is, but you can see it's like a warmer, like a more orangey yellow which is what I like to use. I will probably never use like a lemon yellow straight out of the tube, but maybe make some uh, greens or like corally peachy colors with it. This one is, I think it's vermilion from Holbein. This color, now these, uh, this is a color that I'm, I haven't used it for a long time. It's called, what are you called? like luminous, red, bright red, something like this, from, this is from Shehan Pass, like their hybrid colors, Shinhan Pass. 
and I really love this color. It's like a neon red. However, I did do some independent light fast testing and this color disappeared completely. And so I stopped using it. If you've been here for a while, you might remember that I used to use it and I used to recommend it. And then when I tested it uh, and saw that it like really completely disappeared, <laughs> I stopped using it and I stopped recommending it. Uh, however, since this palette is really intended just for sketching, I decided I'm willing to take that risk or just bring it uh, into my palette. Um, you can't really see how it's it's quite more neony than the uh, screen captures. Um, just for sketches and the fun of it. So I will never use this color on any kind of artwork that might be sold or anything like that. But uh, in a sketchbook, I decided, you know, I, I like it and I want to use it. Uh, then we have this one. What are you? It's pink from Shinhan Pass. And then we have Opera Pink. Opera Pink, this is this pink. And then Holbein Rose, which is this. So you can see these are kind of like the, the gouache versions of these two pinks. So I wanna see, uh, they, they just read a little bit differently. They feel a bit differently to me when I paint with them. Uh, they are a bit brighter, I feel than the watercolor versions, so I want to see how that goes. And then here, these are sharing a pan for some reason. It is Wisteria and Lavender, both from Danielle Smith, and they're very uh, opaque and fun. And then this color, honestly, I can't remember which one it is, but it's like a little bit, uh, you can see, like slightly less purpley blue. And I might want to add also ultramarine blue in gouache. I just have to see, like I'm not sure I need it, but just the finish is a little bit different. This one is, I wanna say, Pale Patina from Holbein. And then this one is some sort of turquoise <laughs> color. Can't remember, sorry. Then this one is Moss Green from Holbein. And the last one, what are you? Oh, this one is Warm Gray. You can see it's quite opaque. So I like that from Royal Talents. Royal Talents has some really um, nice gouache colors. And I think they are less expensive than all of the other brands that I've mentioned. Okay, and this is my palette. Looking at it, I think it will satisfy me. And, you know, what you want in a palette, especially one that you use for sketching, meaning it will probably be a little bit faster to use. Um, you want variety especially when it comes to value. So here I have a lot of dark, uh, like light colors. Then I have some brights. I have a few like earthy tones here. And then some dark colors. I have the Lunar Black, Moon Glow, and Zoazite. Um, so I definitely have a variety. And yeah, that's my palette. I really hope to use it and report back if it's working for me. So I hope you enjoyed this little uh, swatching. If there is a color that you absolutely, absolutely want to know what it is and I failed to know <laughs> which one it was, then leave me a comment with a timestamp and I'll do my best to like hunt it down for you. Uh, hopefully I can do that. And yeah, I've, I've like shown this palette in previous uh, videos for many years. I've had this one. It was gifted to me and I think it is really, I'm going to say it's the best. If, if the most important thing for you is uh, compact, compactness, <laughs> having a small palette, I don't think it gets better than the ones from Art toolkit. I can carry like both of these. I don't need it to be this small like this one. 
I don't need it to be this small. You can see this is like half. So I decided to get the larger one and it's just lovely. And really you could set up a few of these and still keep things very, very uh, small. So I highly, highly recommend these. They are such a great product. And you know, it's always fun to support a small brand that is doing something so well. Uh, they also, they have like different pans and different palettes. And I would consider if, you know, for me, it's not so easy to get these things because they are based in the US and I'm in Europe. So everything with shipping and customs, it's not worth it for me. I had a friend um, take this with her from the US. I had a chip to her house and then I met her on the other side of the world and she brought me the palette. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have ordered it to my uh, house in Europe. But um, if I had free access, I would probably get like a separate uh, palette with just like these um, large mixing spaces. I mean, I, I stuck here some pans, but this came in this palette and it's just an empty white uh, tray, which would be great for mixing. So I would just maybe buy a separate one and just keep it empty and use it for mixing. Uh, but such a great product and you could really fit so, 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 so much uh, in this and you have so much flexibility. Really, I can't say enough good things about these palettes. So um, I hope you will check it out if you're interested and they come in these cute little canvas bags. Uh, I've traveled with these and I've just went out sketching with them. They are fantastic. Of course, you need uh, extra bottle of water and a water container if you uh, don't use water brushes, which I don't like to use water brushes. But uh, other than that, they are super compact. So thanks for watching. See you in another video very soon. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>